Hey y'all and happy Saturday and we're here today to do jelly printing on my brand new jelly plate <laughs> and um, collaging. So this is going to be a process that I'm showing. This is in collaboration with Jelly Arts and Arteza Paints who are helping sponsor um, this video and supporting me getting to 10,000. I'm not that far away. So you guys can um, uh, follow the link below to my blog and all of the information about the the gifting and the 10k um, and how you can participate in it will be there I was just showing you my old plate there that plate is nine years old believe it or not it's my very first jelly plate and I still use it you guys know I like old walls so I put my plates away with stuff on them so that it can I can be able to reactivate them and get all that good stuff off of them. Here are the paints that I'll be doing with Arteza. Um, this is the, one of their new collection of eight colors in their um, metallics series. And this one is just a really yummy banana pearl color. And the other one is one of their black um metallics that's in uh, one of their other sets and they're all on the website and I'll have the links for these products below. I'm also going to be using just good old-fashioned tissue paper that you get from the dollar store. Uh, you saw the, the whole big you know the hank of it and then I just cut it down to the size of the plate that I'm using. Of course we have our brayer. I'll be starting off with this stencil. This is a ladder stencil that you can get over on Jelly Arts site. And then this is my new scripting stencil. So we're going to have fun with these two stencils um, in this technique to first create the backgrounds that I'm going to be using in the collage. Also, these are, believe it or not, like plastic bath mats and sink mats that I get at the dollar store. I think they make some of the best um prints and stencils and you guys who have been following me for a while have already found these and are using these also this um tamale paper i love using this because i use it the way um folks use deli paper but it doesn't have that waxy um bit to it so it will come you know you can clean your plate with it um, i'll be using it to clean in between between the stencils here um, but when it's done, you can definitely coffee and tea stain it, and then you can actually use it back in your books or in collaging because it's more of a paper and it glues down really nicely. So I love using that and it's like a dollar or something a pack, you know, um, when you find it, it's not expensive. So we're going to start off with what I call my Mark Rothko technique. And, um, well, actually, no, we're going to start off creating a background for um, a second pull. So I'm putting the entire um, plate is going to be covered. Getting a nice layer there, just really smoothing the layer out. And like I said, that's Arteza's Fancy Black. And it's there in their iridescent acrylic colors, premium. And I'm putting down the stencil, which is, this is a ladder stencil, Jelly Arts. And I'll have, um, I'll put the links to these things below the video. So here I'm taking a sheet of the tamale paper. And I'm going to use it now just to clean off my plate, basically. And this can be a print, too. Like, you could put this down, and uh, whatever paper you're using can be creating a first print of it. I like using... Um, especially since I'm not really focused on what the pr off print will look like. I like using this paper because when you go to um, coffee stain it, it does some really yummy stuff. And so I just like using it. But you could use anything. So it cleans the plate off. It's a little bit there at the bottom. So I'm going to come back and just grab it. But basically I want to leave the print of the stencil behind so that... When I go to continue to work on this plate, I'm beginning to build up some texture and I'm building up information underneath of the other prints that I'm going to be pulling using my Mark Rothko style of um, background, which is putting two colors down that kind of ombre a little bit in the middle or at the meeting point. It doesn't always have to be in the middle. So now I'm pulling this tissue paper. I'm laying it down and I'm going to pull 
um, I'm gonna pull some of this off and this can actually make a full print or the main thing that I'm trying to do with this is dry my plate down and seal the the image onto the plate so you see some pulled up but a lot is still there and so that could be stained or printed over you know we could keep on going with that I'm just putting it aside because what I'm interested in is what's left there so now I'm going to um, pull out the Arteza and the premium colors the pearl banana yellow love this color this is one of their newer colors and I have just fallen in love with this it's really a neat neutral it's not a white it's not a gold it's not you know it's not an iridescent white but it's this beautiful sort of like off sort of yellow but but a really neutral you know pale yellow that I felt like really goes beautifully with this fancy black which has a lot of a brown black color to it so um I'm going to go ahead now and put this down and see what we pull up. Getting, getting a good pull there. A lot of times um, with this with the tissue paper it's like finding a balance between um, making sure you're getting a good good contact but not so much moisture that the tissue paper actually sticks to the, the plate and you can't pull it up I've done that before but um, you do it once or twice and you definitely learn how not to do it the main thing is to work with thin layers and not have a lot of um, moisture on the plate I have a tendency to work with thinner layers which I call glazing layers and what it does is it allows me to get color down but not too much so now here I'm going to do my Rothko so I've put the banana pearl on the on one half of it and I get a second brayer and then I'm going to do the fancy black um, and this I get this two-toned quality that I really enjoy and I use these backgrounds a lot when I'm going to be creating my collages I love these as foundations for the collage because you can glue them down on whatever your substrate is and get a number of thin layers and a lot of times I will layer the prints on top of each other to really build up the collage effect and you'll see some of this in the collage that I'll be creating at the end of the video and so here we're beginning to pull some more of that image up and a lot of ways this is how I build up my plate to get the old wall I just allow that to stay there and keep on building so you saw there was there were holes in that print what looks like well it's not all a full pull I like that because what that allows is with the tissue paper when you go to collage you can actually have text underneath there you can have another color underneath there and when you layer now that black is not solid across the bottom it's going to allow other things to come through and so I just go with the flow of that um, it gives me a lot of variation in my backgrounds so here I'm laying it down again and I'm going to pull this background again because I know I want to use these backgrounds in my collage that I have planned and so what's good is to just be able to cool, pull a lot of backgrounds in your color palette and I limited it to these two palette color palettes um, these two colors in the palette on purpose because I wanted to just see the kind of diversity that you can get if you just work with two colors just limit yourself um, and then what it helps you to do is develop your ideas around your collage and I knew the materials that I wanted to use um on the back end and so I'll just a lot of times limit myself just to a couple of colors and um and just kind of just pull backgrounds a lot of different ways um my idea with jelly printing is I don't necessarily try to get everything the final piece done on 
the jelly plate. A lot of times I'm layering, I may come back to the prints um, and then come back and layer on them. It's not like I try to get everything done in one session um, on the jelly plate, but I love it for collage materials. I love to, um, here again, you're seeing those blank spots and what have you in there. You'll see how we work all these in. Um, I really do love the idea of layers. I'm big on layering. And so I use the jelly plate to that advantage because it's great for creating a lot of different layers. Um, the thinner the layer and the build, the more you build up with thin layers, I feel the more this plate sings, the more you, the more you get out of this as a tool in your studio. Um, and then the more it also mimics traditional printing, like on flatbed press, on acrylic plates, if you think about mono prints, glass plates, that kind of thing. So here I've just put down um, some basic just resume paper, copier paper. And now you're going to see I'm going to get a different pool because it's, it's, a, it's a thicker paper. It has a different absorbency. And the way it will attach and pull from the plate, you're going to see how different it is from using the tissue paper. And all of these things are by design. You know, I want to create different prints with different levels of opacity. And let's oh, see, that's just gorgeous. So we got most of that off the plate, but that would make a wonderful background. Or I would put it aside and then maybe in another session, I would build up more on that image. Since I'm just doing backgrounds right now, a lot of times I'll pull backgrounds that I'll be using alone, you know, as they are in collages. And other times I'm building up and creating backgrounds that I will use at another time in a different jelly printing session. And maybe I'm using a different color at that point, or maybe I'm using different um, stencils or techniques, you know, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to have prints that you just have sitting for another session that you can continue to build upon. So here I've gone back to the fancy black and I'm going to use a different stencil. This stencil that I'm pulling right now is actually, um, a sink mat that I got at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and a lot of you who've been hanging out with me, you guys ran out and got these as well. Um, I just loved that grid. You know, I thought it was incredible. And when I looked at it, I'm thinking, hmm, I think I could use this on the jelly plate. And it really does make a neat, a neat print. You'll see that. So here again, we're just going in with our um, tamale paper. <laughs> And which you could use anything. You could use tissue paper. You can use regular paper. You have to use something that's going to be thin enough to kind of go down into the print and pull the material up. But you could definitely use deli paper, thing like that. And in this case, you just have to be a little patient and go in and grab all of those different holes there. But the results from this... Um, stencil we'll call it <laughs> are pretty cool so here I'm just taking my time and um yeah so the 10k giveaway I'll jump in and talk about that a little bit while I'm doing this part um, thank you guys for all the support I've had over the years, building the channel, hanging out, all the comments that you made. And I just thought it'd be a fun time for us to get, just get in and do a lot of gifting. And, uh, I see it's a little bit left in the middle there. So I'm just going to get another sheet, a fresh sheet and pull a little bit of material off in the middle. Get rid of that. So yeah, look, don't forget to look below um, for the blog link to take you over to my blog and all of the different gifts and celebrations and the things that are, you know, doing the support from Jelly Arts and the support from Arteza with some of the, um, the gifts that will be coming from them um, are just going to be, are, are incredible. And I just can't thank them enough for the support. So Look at that print. Look at what's left behind. I love 
that stencil or that sink mat from the Dollar Tree. So here we're putting down um, the tissue paper. So I can just pull this print up or as much of it as I can pull up. Because sometimes bits of it, because I do put down sort of thin layers. I mean, they're thicker than my glaze layers. But sometimes I don't necessarily get enough down to pull a full print. But I'm okay with that because I'm always just trying to get bits of the information anyway. That's my style. And when I go, I'll later be doing a print over that. And you can see how you can just build up over that material. So now I have all that yummy stuff on the plate. So let's go ahead and pull a good print using our um, the pearl banana yellow. And here again, I'm kind of doing a glaze, what I call a glaze layer. You see, I don't put a lot on my plate and um, I really do just allow it to, I go over it enough times that I'm getting a nice clean uh, distribution, an even distribution of paint, but not so much so that it's sliding around and it's, and it's kind of goppy or, or goopy. <laughs> And then here I'm just really laying that down good. And here we're going to pull it again. And because I'm using the copier paper, here again we have a, a heavier weight paper. And look how much we get. Really a good print there. And that's just great material for background. I can use that in a collage. I can continue to develop on, on top of that with other prints. Here I'm going to put some more of our pearl banana yellow down and I'm shifting it around. I'm putting a little bit of the fancy black at the top and the yellow at the bottom just to kind of distribute color around the plate. I have a tendency to do that. So when I go back to putting the, the lighter color at the top, I'll get more of the little black background and bits and pieces that I really like that I feel give um, an additional dimension to my color palette so it's just not like flat black and then flat yellow I like all the bits and pieces in it you guys know that um, I'm pretty well known for my old wall technique <laughs> it was one of the techniques I was doing early on um, and it came from me just allowing these kind of really thin layers to build up and just kind of mimic how you know old walls look it's just all these bits and pieces and um, you know, coats of paint over the years that have, you know, chipped off and been repainted and chipped off and repainted and salt seeping through the walls and, you know, all the stuff that happens. I love that look. So that was one of the techniques that early on I found that I could mimic nicely on the jelly plate. Okay, so here's another background. So we got a little bit of that ombre and going on there, but um, just creating various backgrounds for, because when I go to do the collage, I'm not sure exactly what I want to use, what I, you know, um, I just have this overall idea. So obviously I won't be using all of these backgrounds in the collage, but it gives me an option to really be free to explore um, the material that I have before me when it is time to collage and then of course all these backgrounds uh, file away and I use them in other collaging other projects I may go back in um, and jelly print on them at a later point like I talked about so um, here again I've put down some copier paper uh, which is a heavier weight stock I think this is like a 20 pound so it just makes it I'll get a, a, a more complete pool. Now I'm really being spoiled by this new plate because I'm, I'm having to get her broken in, but wow, I'm getting such really good pools. I didn't realize how um, I love my old plate and it allows me to do a lot of different techniques, but I hadn't had a fresh jelly plate in so long until Jelly Art said, hey, we'll send you some. What do you want? That uh, I forgot what a brand new plate actually really did so I'm having fun with this plate so now I'm going to put down a little bit of my stencil because you'll see I want to fill in a, a part of that 
last print and just kind of playing with techniques here. So I'm going to put the fancy black down on the um, Arteza palette, the disposable palette. I love using that. I use that for a lot of different techniques. And, um, and I'll use a sponge, one of the makeup sponges. And that's one of the ways I use this stencil. I've been using my stencils a lot of different ways. These will be out in October. I will let you guys know when they're available. You can always check back at the channel. I will also be putting them up on my blog. But they're with eye stencils. So if you're familiar with eye stencils, you can just keep an eye on um, them when they actually load the page with the various stencils. I have a number of them that are going to be coming out around this scripting. Um, images. So I've been having a lot of fun designing them and working with them. So I'll be putting the information out sometime at the beginning of October. So here you can see I've put like a veil down of, you know, because using a sponge we're just stippling through. But you'll see how much is going to pull up onto the print. And I'll also be announcing it on my um, Instagram page and all the places you guys follow me. You'll, if you're on my mailing list, I'll be sending out an email when they're ready. And I know we're, we're doing some specials. Um, so you'll want to, you know, get in. If you've been wanting my stencils, then you'll definitely want to look out for that so that you can get um, some of the specials that are planned. Okay, so we pulled that scripting up onto that print. And I like the way it came, you know, which is why I didn't want to make it super thick because I wanted it to blend in with the other parts of the background. I didn't want it to stand out so strong that it looked like an element that didn't necessarily happen along with the other printing. So here we are putting some more of the fancy black down and we're getting ready to use another stencil that I got at the uh, dollar store as well. And this one actually was a bath mat that was pretty big and I cut it down to a couple of my different plate sizes. Um, this one is actually from my, one of my larger plates, but um, you're going to love this pattern too. So don't overlook the dollar stores <laughs> go into the bath session section in the kitchen section and see what kind of patterns they may have that you resonate with um so that you can try them you know and they don't cost that much so if it turns out oh, i don't really like that pattern or they didn't work the way i thought you know really wasn't but a dollar but i have had a lot of success with them i mean just like the three that i'm showing you all three of them i've gotten and i've really loved they really work nicely. I don't think that I'm going to do the third one in this video, though I pulled it out. You saw it in the beginning. I think I showed three of them. So, and I like this, the pattern that this one makes um, when I do the first cleanup. And I use that pattern a lot. Like that paper there, I will probably tea stain or coffee stain. And it really does um, make really nice collage paper. So here there was a little bit left in the middle I was showing you all, so we wanted to grab that. Yep. Just cleaning it up a little bit so that the pattern is a little bit more distinct when we go to pull it. See? Get a nice amount left behind. Because those little circles protected what was there, you'll get it we get a really strong pull the first time around because a lot of that material is down on that um, plate those circles particularly I'm really enjoying working with this limited palette and just you know working back and forth between the tissue paper and the 20 pound copier paper so you see, I get a good print there. See, a little bit stuck there, but that was right at the edge. No big deal. Get a nice print. And then I still have the ghost left behind there, which we're going to pull using um, some more of our pearl banana yellow. I 
um, when I went to edit this video, I was what I was cutting out was a lot of me cleaning off the brayer and stuff like that. I didn't feel like you guys needed to deal with too much of that in between everything, but I was finding I had to really try to keep my plate, my brayer is clean. And I have a tendency to really clean them off well on extra paper that then, of course, I eco stain coffee or tea or um, avocado or whatever I'm using. And the papers, even those, your papers that you're just cleaning your brayer off, really come out nicely. Those of you who've seen, it's, you know, been following me for a while and you've seen that, they really are incredible and they make great pages for our journals, our junk journals, different things like that. Now, see, this really came out nice. I think this really has an old wall kind of look like old wallpaper or maybe old plaster kind of stuff that's cracked in that pattern has a really kind of Phoenician Byzantine kind of old world look to it um, especially in the ghost like that so here I'm finished with our backgrounds we have those just those two colors and now we are on to I'm pulled out um, in the iridescent it's called Fancy Pink or Fanciful Pink in the Arteza. It's in the same collection as the, um, the Fancy Black. And I love this. This is like an AB color. It's like a white pearlized AB. And I went on and used this because I had a little bit of black left on the page. And I wanted to go ahead and clean that off. And what it's going to do is just make this really kind of a B unicorn kind of looking background that will just it'll just have a little bit of black on it it's not going to look like much when I pull it but it's great collage material um, because I like to have as many neutrals and things with bits of information on it and here this also is a page that I could come back at a later point and jelly print on top of but I had a little bit of material left on that plate and since my plate was responsive I wanted to go ahead and pull it off and I just thought it was a great opportunity to show you guys see that it doesn't look like much but you see that iridescent and it either is just foundation to continue to print on or I use this as mater collage material so I would use like it's flying around <laughs> or I'd come back and do my intuitive scripting on that and in fact I think that's what I'm going to show you guys here as well. So you shall see. Using a little bit more of this, putting some more down. And I'm going to cover um, the first print of that bath mat. And this is a glaze. So I'm showing you how I would just use it as a very thin glaze. And see, I'm just constantly taking off. So you can, you can really see through the plate. And then when I go to put that um, print that we pulled on the tissue paper, it's just going to fill it in and give it like a really beautiful glazed. And that sort of fancy black that's kind of like a chocolate black. It'll look even a little more chocolatey, a little more chocolate brown black with the AB on top and it's one of my favorite combinations as well you see that how it almost makes it kind of have like that black now looks a little bit more of a purple kind of color so yeah I really really like that just really neat so So let's see, I am, okay, so I'm using more of the pearl, banana pearl, because I'm going back over some of the prints that I had pulled originally, um, and I'm going to just go ahead and, and fill them out. So I like using these glazed, this glazing technique, because you know, like you have these prints that you kind of have like right there. That's just a partial. So I can coffee stain it, but I can also show you here where I'm just going to do a glaze 
And the glaze just puts another layer of acrylic down. So if I want to go back and do prints on it at another point, if I want to use it as a collage element of its own, if I want to come back and do intuitive scripting on top of it, you know, I've kind of just gotten another layer of color down that's really thin, but just adds to the print. And remember now, because I like the collage with these, I love the build up. Once again, I'm using these a lot in my collages, in my book arts projects, various places like that where I'm just using my jelly prints in a lot of different ways. Okay, so now I've gone back and pulled one of the earlier prints that is dry now. And I'm laying it back down on the plate because I'm going to put my scripting down as a stencil. And I really want, I mean, because the paper itself is already tissue paper, so that's going to slide around. Then I'm going to put a stencil on top that could slide around. So I like putting it back on the jelly plate. And the jelly plate just acts as a really nice tactile surface to hold that paper in place while I go to do stenciling on top of it. So I was trying to decide which side I wanted to put what color and all of that. So I went and pulled the Arteza in the white. It's just their, their um, white acrylic. And these are a little heavy body. So now the iridescents have a tendency to have more of a flow. You can see when they come out, they're a little thinner. They're more of like a flow paint if you think about it, where this white right here is a little more heavy body. They're not necessarily called heavy body, but they're a thicker, you know, acrylic. And so you're going to see the difference in the way these are going to print on top of the acrylic surface that we're working on. And I like working with the paints and have them do different things. As you guys know, I like sort of the grunge, old world, you know, um, weathered kind of look. And so you're going to see where the white is going to go down in sort of a thicker, and this is also a great way of example of how, what the various paints will do with stencils. And then of course with these scripting stencils, where I've really spent time trying to get the stencil to look more like a script and less like a stencil. So it doesn't have as many breaks and what have you in it. Um, I didn't want that so um i find that in using the stencils um pushing the material down into it like this really works nicely on top of the surface so i put the white there and that's going to have a different effect than the fancy black and you'll see this is going to be a little bit more smudged it's going to be a little bit more um looser um because of the fact that this paint is more of a flow. So you kind of pick and choose your paints and pick and choose the looks that you're going for. So I wanted this two-toned. Um, and also I wanted to be able to use the stencil, the same stencil, like at the same time, but I wanted it to have different effects and in a way for it to look like it's two different stencils or two different times that it was stenciled. Um, and so you'll see when I pull it. So I just use uh, old, uh, you know, cards from the hotel key cards. <laughs> I always save those because they make good um they have great application for this kind of thing. And they work to me, work better than my old credit cards because they don't have any of those numbers and bumps and stuff on them. So they're a lot smoother. So now I'm just really scraping it and getting um, it in there good and cleared off. So now you see how nice and crisp the bottom, the white is, but how the top is a little bit more smudge, is a little bit more organic. That's because of the two paints. And that's what I was going for. I wanted them to look different, but I wanted to put the application down at the same time. And so now just pull this off and put it to the side. It won't stick to the plate because the original two layers were dry. And so it made the tissue paper stronger and the plate 
um, wasn't wet or anything, so it's easy to pull it back up. So you can see the kind of detail that we got out of that print. I know that that piece will make it into the collage. <laughs> okay, so now I'm coming back with a little bit of the um, pearl. And I'm just going to pull some of this extra material up. And um, let me see. So we have another technique that I'm going to work on with the with my stencil as well. I'll show you a couple of different ways. I'll be working a lot with these, so you'll see. But I've been having a lot of fun with them in our studio. So I thought when I went to do this 10K celebration, you know, I'll share some of the new stuff that I'm doing in the studio with you guys and some of my all-time favorite techniques. Now, what I'm going to do is put the stencil down. This time, I just didn't leave it on the plate because it hadn't dried yet, but I wanted to keep on working. And I didn't want to put it back on the plate and it wasn't dried and then it would have stuck to the plate. So I'm going to take my chances because I'm using the, this is the Arteza black. So this is the black, like the white. It's more heavy bodied. So I just, I wanted to push this down into the plate and show you what this will look like on that um, pearl background. I'm having a lot of fun working with these stencils and I have a several designs that are coming out and I'm telling you I have a number in the pipeline. So I hope you guys will enjoy and have as much fun with them as I have been having already <laughs> once they come out and there's going to be some large there's all different size um, symbols and you'll see there's there are different ones aside from these as well so we're gonna have fun a little bit more down and here you just push it down into you know coming straight down and then I go aside, you know, I kind of go to angle, I go across and that way you're just pushing the material in to the stencil at different angles, which just help to fill up the channels and get a nice print. Okay, so we're pulling off the big reveal. See, so that black is thick like the white. And see, then you go back and get really nice. And see how they really don't see the breaks? Every now and then you see a little break in the symbols. But I really worked hard along with one of my followers who really was gracious to offer helping to put these images in vector, Bonnie. Just thank you so much. And we spent time testing these and going back and forth to get these to where we thought we enjoyed using them and that hope that you would as well. So I just can't thank Bonnie enough for being a part of this project to help me get these stencils to market. So now we're getting ready to go into the collage phase of it all. I um, have pulled out some different papers. These are some very old antique very old antique, but some antique uh, book pages. This is a just a piece of cardboard. I just grabbed this as a substrate. I oftentimes I work on old book boards, like I'll get vintage, uh, antique and vintage books, and I like to collage on top of those. I also collage on top of um, the wood panel boards that you can purchase. But this time I just grabbed cardboard because I wanted to keep it simple for those of you who might just want to jump right in and do this process, I figure, okay, we all can get tissue paper. We all can find some cardboard for somewhere. Whatever paint you already have, go for it. Um, 
And so that's why I had this piece of cardboard. I'm like, okay, let me use this. Cause I would then probably mount this onto a wood straight, a wood board or some a substrate of some sort. So now I'm just looking to figure out which of my backgrounds do I want to use. I kind of went through the ones that I had done for the day. And now I'm looking at all the various elements. That piece of paper I have is just a piece of uh, Asian onion skin that I um, rust um, dyed. And I really, I really love the colors. I think it looks so nice with the vintage papers. It looks good with this. That's why I was going for this sort of brown black and that sort of creamy yellow because I knew I was going to be using these vintage papers and I didn't want the stark white because the papers I was working with were a little more warm and so that's kind of why I picked the color palette that I did because I knew I wanted to work with these papers and I felt like I would get contrast but it still would I would still kind of get this monochrome effect to the collage so I think I pretty much have decided on this background I'm using the Giotto glues it's uh, G-I-O-T-T-O and uh, these are made in Italy and we have found them a number of places sometimes Amazon will have them my um, followers and patrons have found these for me and just send them to me I just love you guys so much You're just awesome so some came from the UK <laughs> some came from Amazon <laughs> I've gotten so many, honestly, I haven't bought any on my own yet because I've got quite a stash. But they're made in Italy. So for those of you that are in Europe, um, Italy, you know, places like that, you, you're getting these things. I think they're like $1.50 a stick or something like that. So now that I've gotten a, a nice chunk on the board, I just go around and put a little bit on the edges because I want on that edge that had the corrugated because I wanted to make sure that there was enough glue there. And then I grab trusty credit card and just very gently start smoothing it. Of course, I don't want to rip the tissue paper, but the nice thing about the tissue paper, once it gets a couple layers or even just one good layer of acrylic on it, it really strengthens the paper. So you really don't have to worry too much about it tearing or anything like that. So I'm really loving the way this is going down it's looking see how nicely the tissue paper glues down and sticks to your boards no matter what you're using it just it's a dream to work with so I know I want to work with this but just trying to figure out how I want to use it so I'm pretty much thinking that I'm going to just rip a section off and then do a layering so I kind of get this this kind of ombre and this sort of layering of the of the language up into the top area where I'm going to be putting the, my other collage elements. So I pretty much settled on that chunk. And so what I do, I'm doing is I'm grabbing my straight edge and I'm also grabbing my water brush. Um, the one that I'm using is actually an Arteza one that came with my yummy metallics. <laughs> But I like to just go ahead and get a good stroking of water down. Don't be afraid to get it really um, wet because see how it just tears so easily. And even with all that paint that's there with the scripting, it just gives a nice feathering, which I like. So when you go to glue it down, you don't have this straight line. You're going to have like this feathered edge that just blends into me um, more beautifully with um, the other elements that we're putting down so now i'm back to figuring i'm going to put this on top i'm going to put it underneath what else am i going to do you know how we go back and forth when we're playing and sort of auditioning all of our our bits and bobs so i'm putting that antique script down and I want some of this I think I'm gonna tear a bit of that and integrate it so the same thing when I go to put 
this down. I do the same thing with these old um, Asian papers and they tear really nicely and you get that really beautiful feathering. And I use this a lot when I'm tearing papers. Just get your, your water brush and put it down and just pull and you're going to get that really nice feathering. You can see where the line is, where it's sort of wet there. This paper is so strong because this Asian paper is like a gompi, which has a long, a very strong fiber in it. So um, you really have to pull it because you're really pulling. And this old paper really has just really good paper and it's very strong. So I'm liking what I have there. Just start tapping my fingers to figure out if I wanted to put anything else in, but I pretty much decided no. I like what I've got going there. So, you know, I wanted sort of just a beautiful collage, something complex but simplistic, not too much of stuff going on. So now I'm going to go ahead and collage this. So I'm putting more of that glue directly on the paper surface. You always want to glue the most stable surface. So in this case, the stable surface is the board. Um, you don't want to try to put the glue on the tissue paper because it's not, it's thin, you know, you can rip it. It's not as stable. So always when you're gluing, just try to determine what is your most stable surface. And that's the surface you want to put the glue on. Believe me, it creates less problems. I'm really making those sure those edges and those corners are really getting down. I believe in using glue. You know, I want to make sure I get a good coverage. So maybe to some it's like I'm oh there's a Giotto I show you guys there. Maybe in a way to some, it seems like I'm over gluing, but I'm not of that school. I like to make sure that whatever I'm going to put down is going to stay down. And that Giotto is really a very sticky glue. So it glues really well. But the thing about tissue paper is I like to make sure all of it's captured because, oops, see what I did? I started gluing my little edge down after I had already decided that I was going to put paper underneath. So I thought I grabbed it quick enough that I was able to pull that back up without doing any damage. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to, um, with the tissue paper to make sure you have enough glue down because you can definitely get air pockets and there's nothing worse than have everything down and then you got this big clumpy air pocket because you didn't get enough glue. So you saw what I did there. I put my little um, key card underneath it so that while I'm gluing up this piece here, I don't have to worry about it coming back down and maybe sticking. I got some kind of like little <laughs> some plastic in between there. I was deciding which side I wanted to have um, facing up. Did I want the stronger circle or did I want the more subtle? And I decided to go with the stronger color. Although when you go to, when it gets wet like this, it all sort of looks like it would have been. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull that back. And get. I love that. Um. The, the color of the paper, the texture of it, everything is just divine. Just trying to make sure everything is straight. And uh, I'm just eyeballing it that it's in the center, all that good stuff we do. And I really love how all these papers, by them being translucent, they just all, you know, go together so nicely and you can see the other color underneath it and I don't know what's with me constantly still trying to put that paper down and I still have stuff I want to put underneath it oh boy but all even the Japanese papers are thin 
So we're just constantly getting layer after layer and we're seeing the layer underneath layer over top of layer. I like um, working like that. I like to see history. I like to see layers. That's why I jelly print with layers. I collage with layers. Um, I love building up surfaces. I like the idea of which was my why my work is informed so much by like archaeology. I studied anthropology and archaeology. So I like the idea of textural materials and found materials and things that speak to cultural norms over time and that kind of thing. So I'm just naturally into layering. <laughs> In my work, I like it to look like when it's done, even though all of this was made today, <laughs> you know, I like for it to look like it's things that happened over time. So I decided, let me go ahead and put some waste paper down because I really want to get more glue on this edge since it's been glued up for a while. It was still pretty sticky, but I want to make sure I get a good, you know, um, adhesion there. So I just put that waste paper down so I could put some pressure on it and now I can flip it up. But even though when we're done, you know, this is all of this except for that, those couple strips of the antique paper, we all, we just finished making all of this stuff. And, but I like the fact that it has that age to it and that storytelling. Um, my process I call art mythos. And those of you who have are followed me over in the school and have done, have have taken the free course infinite pool which is always listed below my videos if you've never done it please um, give it a, a, a try it's a, it's a it's called the infinite pool and it's how to never run out of ideas and I really do go over techniques that can be helpful yeah I was trying to decide that I wanted it up top I'm like nah I don't want that extra element up there so um, it's art mythos. It's, it's, it's telling our stories visually. It's using art and its expression to tell our stories because though we're artists, we're still storytellers. You know, we're still telling a story and through the visual context. So my art mythos is a part of my archaeomythologist background. And, um, and so I think my work reflects a lot of those interests. So now, you know, like... Admittedly, that vintage paper goes along, those two little strips go a long way towards adding to the old world feel of it. So, you know, when you're foraging out and about, you know, finding old papers, little vintage pieces, old books and bookstores, sometimes you might pay a little bit for them, but you can tear it up and use it in your work and it goes a long way. So I'm counting this one as done. I'm really loving it, all the elements together. And of course, I sat there for a minute and I thought, well, no, I think I got to get my scripting in there. So using the, ten, uh, the Seth After Eyes inks, I love these inks. They really kind of lay on the surface like a paint. Um, but they're just really beautiful inks. So using my um, Tracy Levison brushes, you guys that follow me, you know I love Tracy's brushes. The link will be below as well. I, you know, kind of get into my Zen mode here. <laughs> you guys will see me kind of setting it up here because I get one shot at this. <laughs> and I just have to trust that that is going to be the right expression. And I'm telling you, bingo. Oh, I just loved that script. It's like so perfect. I feel like after doing the artwork and everything, it's like channeling that perfect script. 